All right, this time we're changing gears, getting away from the completely changing gears, getting away from the uh, I stuff and imaginary number stuff to back to geometry. Let's do this. Oops, boom, boom. Now watch what I'm going to do. I hit the shift button. You know what the shift button does when I extend that out? Keeps it the same what? Doesn't keep it the same size. It definitely made it bigger. Proportion, right? It keeps it the same proportion. You got that? Okay. So what I want to show you is this. This is a rectangle. We'll call this the length, and we'll call this the width. And let's say, I don't know exactly how much bigger this is, but let's just make it up. Let's say, and it's probably not this much bigger, but let's just do this because this is the number they use in the book. Okay. So let's say we've made the length of it four times as big, and the width, if it stayed in proportion, then the width is also four times as big. Make sense? Because if it wasn't, then it wouldn't be in proportion. So let's find the area of this triangle. This triangle right here, the area is just what? It's the length times the width. Well, did I say triangle? Yeah. I did, didn't I? <laughs> Rectangle. Stop me if you hear me say something like that. Sometimes I use these words so much, I just get them all mixed up. All right, so this is a rectangle, not triangle. So the area of this rectangle is going to be what? 4L times what? 4W, which is, let's multiply that together. What's 4 times 4? 16, what? L times W. Would you agree with that? So look at this. What do we do to the sides? We multiplied the sides by 4, so we quadrupled the sides, didn't we? But what did that do to the area? Did it quadruple the area? No. What did it do? It multiplied it by how much? 16. 16 times. Okay. It's not, the area didn't double. So what if the area of this, let's say the, the length of this was, I don't know, let's think easy numbers, 4 and the width was 3. Okay. So up here, what would it be? It would be 4 times 4, which would be what? 16, and this would be what? 4 times 3, which would be 12. What's the area of this first rectangle then? That's 12. Okay, what's the area of this? Somebody do that on calculator. I don't know what that is. What's 16 times 12? Actually, I'll just write it like this. Watch, this will actually make it kind of easy. 492? 192. 192. All right, so let's look at this. The area was 12 square whatever it is. Let's say inches, okay? So this was 12 square inches. This is 192 square inches. Look, but what did we do? We just, we just multiplied the lengths of the sides by 4, didn't we? But did that increase the area just by 4? No, because this was 12. If I increase the area by 4, then what would this area be? If I only increase the area by 4 times, it would be what? 48, right. But it's not 48. Look how much bigger it is. It's 192, isn't it? So what did I do? I took that area. It was it was 12, and I made it 192, where the area was 1 length times width, and I changed it to what? 16 times the length times the width. Okay? 16 more than. What if the length was only 3 times, and the width was 3 times? I only changed the length and the width by 3. How much more area is this rectangle than this one then? It would be 9 times exactly. You getting the swing of it now? Okay, 16 because I squared it, didn't I? Okay, and if I, if I change, what if I just double the length of this side? Then what's the area going to be? It's going to be 4 times as big. That's right. If I made this length 5 times as long as this length, then what would the area be? 25 times as much. You follow me? Because it's 5 times this way, and it's 5 times this way. 5 times 5 is 25, so it's 25 times as much. It's not just double. What about the perimeter? What would the perimeter be? The perimeter of this, let's put some numbers in here. Okay, and then this is 16, and that's 12 right there. What about the perimeter? The perimeter, that's 8 and 6, which is what? Perimeter. Perimeter. Come on. 8 and 6. Come on. 8 plus 6. Please help me out. Just give me a number. 
thank you, okay? Just want to see if you're paying attention. I know what the answer is. I just want to see if you're paying attention, if you're awake here, okay? So it's, the perimeter would be 14 here. What would the perimeter be here? That's 32, right? And that's 24. So what's 32? I'll help you out. And 24, which is what? What? Wow. How about 56, okay? So this would be 56. What did we do? Look, we quadrupled the perimeter, and it just quadrupled. You see that? It quadrupled the... Um, the perimeter. So the perimeter, the distance around, if I double the perimeter of one, right, let's say I take the first rectangle and I double the uh, length, what's it do to the perimeter? It doubles the perimeter. If I multiply it by three, okay, then it triples the, right, it just multiplies the perimeter by three. But area is different, isn't it? That's what I want you to look at. I want you to look at area. Okay, the area is increased by the length squared. All right, you got it? So if I triple the length and the width, then I 3 squared multiply by 9 to get the new area. You follow me? Okay, so if I, if I made one length 10 times, then what would the area be? It would be 10 what? Squared, right? 10 squared. So the area would be 100 times as much as the original figure. Okay? All right. With that in mind, let's take a look at how they set the problem up. All right, so here's the same situation. What I'm going to do is talk about the ratio of the areas. This is just one LW, correct? And this would be how much LW? Oh, come on. 16 LW. We just went through the whole thing, all right? All right, 16 LW. Let's talk about the ratio. Let's compare the small one to the large one. All right, so what are the ratios? It's 1 LW over what? 16 LWs. The LWs basically cancel out, so the ratio would be 1 to 16. If I wanted to compare the large one to the small one, then what would that be? 16 to 1. Okay, it just depends on which one you want to compare one to the other. Does it make sense? Okay, so let's look at the top of 46. There's an example right there. Now, this works with any area, not just a rectangle. It could be the area of a circle, the area of a triangle. It doesn't make any difference, okay? It works with all the areas. So look at the top of 46. Here's the kind of question they might ask you. They're going to say, what is the, or it says, the radius of one circle is R, right? So there's the radius. It's an ugly R. Let's try it again. That's a little better. The radius of one circle is R, and the radius of the other circle is this. It's three-fifths R. All right, so it's not twice as much, right? It's not half as much. It's not an easy number like this. It's three-fifths what this original one was. Which one's the bigger one? Which one's the smaller one? Yeah, the bigger one's the R, and the smaller one's the three-fifths R, right? Because three-fifths is less than one, obviously, okay? The question says, what is the ratio of the area of the first circle to the area? Now, remember, this is just the radius, okay, of the circle. I want to find the ratio of the area okay of the first circle to the second circle so here would be the ratio of the uh, radius let's write it like this 3 r over 5 that would be the ratio of the radius do you see it but I wanna find the ratio of the area so what do we do to that number to find the area remember what we did we compared this to this so what did it do it, it squared it. If this was twice as much, what did we do? We went 2 squared, right? If it was 3 times as much, we went what? 3 squared. 4 times 4 squared. 5 times 5 squared. Get it? Okay, what about this? What do you think we're going to do? First of all, let's, we're finding the area. So what is the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. I'm going to go to little r. Is that all right? They use capital R. I don't know why. I, I like using little r for the area. Okay, so pi r squared. That's what the radius of that circle would be, correct? And um, what we're doing now, uh, let's see, did I do this right? Yeah, let's do this. What would this be? This would be pi r squared, wouldn't it? But what's the radius of the new circle? It's 3 r over 5, but what do we have to do to it? Square it. Okay, now watch what I'm doing. Look what happens here. Look what happens to the pi's. They cancel each other out. All we're going to do is simplify this thing. Okay, so look what we have. We've got r squared over, let's square everything in here. So what do I get? I get a 9 
I get a r squared, and I get a what? 25. Do you see that? Look what happens to the r's. They cancel out. Now I got a 1 up here. This is a little tricky, but what's 1 divided by 9 over 25? 25 over 9. Okay, that is the ratio, okay, of the area of the new circle to the old circle. So basically, what did we just do to this 3 fifths? Look what we did. If I found the ratio of the first one to the second one, okay, 1 over 3 fifths basically is what I did. What did I do to both of those? I squared them, didn't I? I squared that, I squared that, so that's 1 over 9 over 25. I flip it and I get 25 ninths. So that is the, it says, what's the ratio of the area of the first one to the second one? That's the ratio. Remember the first one was the bigger one and the second one was the smaller one. So what's the ratio of the areas? It's 25 to what? To 9. That's the ratio of the larger circle to the smaller circle. Remember, we're comparing the large one to the small one. So you're going to have a bigger number on top. If you would have written 9 over 25, you should look at the answer and say there's no way that that's right because I can't compare the small or the large one to the small one and get a ratio of 9 to 25. That doesn't make sense, does it? So really, what did I just do to that fraction? I just squared it, didn't I? Okay. And then I flipped it. Then I get the larger one to the smaller one. It's actually easy to do. It's a little bit weird to understand how we get that thing. I don't know if I did the best job explaining it, but um, that's good enough at least for you to get the answers to this. All right. So you may see a problem like this, and if you see a problem like this, either go back to the video or go back to your notes. Probably go back to your notes first, and if you don't understand your notes, maybe go back to the video and see how that works. Okay, And that would be your answer. That would be your new ratio. All right. So this is what they originally give you right here. Right, the ratio of one circle to the ratio of another circle. And what's the ratio of the area? Right, This is just the radius. What's the ratio of the area? Instead of 3 to 5, it's 25 to 9. It's easy to do. You square it, you flip them, boom, you're done. We good with that? All right. Um, I think that's enough. Now they do, i tell you what. I want you to do this on your own, though. Look at example 510 and 511. I'm not going to go through a big, long explanation for you, but I want to, um, I just want to show you kind of how to do it. It's, um, here's the equation. Remember Pythagorean theorem? Okay, if you had a right triangle, it's what? A, B, and C. What's the formula? a squared plus b squared, right, equals c squared. What they're doing now is they're making it three-dimensional. They're making it a box. Do you see the bottom of page 46? See, it looks like a box. Okay, it says, um, it says find the length of diagonal AC in the rectangular solid show. Do a two-step development. Don't use the formula. Okay. Um, actually, I'm okay if you use the formula. Here's the formula. Let me just show it to you. So... Basically, AC, you know what, let's not worry about that. I think we need to explain this a little bit more, so we'll hit that a little bit more tomorrow. But that won't take us a whole time, it'll just take us a couple minutes, okay? So, officially, uh, Lesson 5 is due tomorrow, all right? So you have to have every problem done. Now look, try every problem. Don't just throw a bunch of junk down, because you're going to be tested on this stuff. You will start pretty soon here having some tests and having some quizzes, and you're going to have to ha practice these things and make sure that you um, you practice them. And don't just leave them blank. And that's what some people are doing, and that's not a good thing for you to do. All right? You've got to practice these, and we'll see how you do. All right? What's that? Yeah, basically, the first thing is just an explanation, but... Um, oh, two more lessons, you mean? Yeah, yeah. When we get to well, when we get to lesson eight, we'll have a test. Okay, uh, we'll probably have a quiz early next week sometime. Maybe even a couple of them. All right. Okay, that's it.